I am Angela Clark, the artist behind Clark Fine Art. Welcome to part three of Winter's Day in the Park. Today, we will be painting our bridge, we will put in our couple, add our foreground trees, and finish off with our snow. If you missed part one or two, I will include a link to those here. As I mentioned in part two, we will begin by removing the post that we put in, because we're gonna need to reposition these. So just take some titanium white, cover over those, Hit that with the hair dryer so that you can go back and do that one more time. This is going to help the black from continuing to show through. And then we'll end up coming back through with some of our actual snow color and just making these disappear completely. So we're going to mix up a little bit of that snow color that we have around them and just cover right over those and they will disappear. Now, if you didn't put your posts in, you're already at this point and you got a little bit ahead of the game. So once we've covered those posts, I'm going to grab a round brush and we're going to work on our foreground trees. So our foreground trees are going to be slightly darker than our trees that we have in the middle ground. So we're going to mix up that Mars black and a little bit of titanium white because we want it to be not straight Mars black, but not as light as our middle ground trees. Decide where you want to place your foreground trees. And we're going to start laying these in. We're going to put in about three of them. And so just these are going to be thicker. So as you do the trunks and pulling out your branches, again, as you come up, slowly start to have less pressure pulling the brush away from the paper and that is going to allow your branches to get narrower as you go upwards and outwards. Our trunks will be a bit wider than the trees in our middle ground so that they appear closer adding more depth and pushing back what is already on your canvas. As your branches of your foreground trees cross over those that are behind it, it's gonna also continue to add depth. And this last tree is gonna be clo the closest tree. So it will have the largest trunk. It will appear to be our largest tree because it is closest to us. So again, just pulling out those branches Having your brush strokes get lighter as you continue and move outward. And those branches again crossing over the tree behind it. And this just adds more depth. When I do my trees, like I mentioned before, as I bring my brush stroke up, if I get a little bump in the stroke or it looks like there's a little... Uh, where it's not perfectly smooth, you'll see here, I'm going to take that and just draw it out. And that's going to be where my next branch goes. And that's how I decide where my branches are. I just let it happen. However, the brush stroke goes, there's a little bump, things aren't exactly smooth. That's where another branch would grow out of the tree. And that's how I decide where my branches are going to be placed. So now we need to move on to our bridge. We're going to actually put in the post and this post it's going to be taller than the posts that are on our right because that is going deeper into our painting and this is about an inch and a half is what I made mine about an inch and a half tall now the one on the right again will be smaller it's within an inch because we want to show depth it's going into the painting now I'm going to my liner brush and taking my liner brush you can use the ruler to help you get a nice straight line. So if you have trouble painting nice straight lines, just take your ruler, set that in there where you want your post to be and paint right down the side of it. And that'll give you a nice straight line and then you can just fill them in. Always remember though, wipe off your ruler every time. Last thing you wanna do is put that ruler back to your painting and transfer paint from the previous line you did. So now we're going to end up working on our back rail here soon. And we're going to want to follow the arch that is already there on the bridge. And we're going to want to just bring that over from the left to the right. And it's going to 
get closer together as we go right because again our post is not as tall and that's going to help with the depth of our bridge taking us into our painting. And once we do that, we're going to add our upright posts that support this rail. And then we will come back through with a center rail that connects in between all of our posts. And this will provide us the back railing of our bridge. You know, again, making the front post on the right side are going to be about an inch. There, wiping off that roller so we don't transfer any of that paint and setting both of our lines and, and actually looking at this. This is going to be a little a little tall. It's a, it's a little big compared to the other post. It should be smaller than the post to the left. So we'll come back and we'll fix this later. So no worries if yours is the same size as this, we're going to take care of that and it'll be covered with snow and we won't have any issues. So here I've started with my lantern and I'm only going to do the lantern on this one post as I just wanted to set the design of my lantern and get the look that I'm going for. And, and what's bothering me here, it just looks offset. And it's actually that left side. So adjusting that and it, that's just paper towel with water you can easily wipe that off as long as your under layers are dry you can easily just wipe the paint right away while our bridge dries we're going to work on the snow on our trees so we're going to mix up some tones of gray and we're going to want that really light gray we don't want to just use titanium white to paint the snow because it's not our brightest brights so we're going to mix up a light gray and we're going to come in on some of these trees. And as we do the trees that are further to uh, further back in our painting, we're going to want to make sure that we mix up uh, an even darker gray. It'll be just slightly lighter than the trees that are in our furthest distance. So just slightly lighter than those trees back there. And that will allow us to just put a few little uh, highlights or, or, or snow setting on those branches back there that you would see. Not a lot of detail because it's much further back. So we want to mix up these darker tones and we're going to put those on our trees that are further in the distance. As we work forward in our painting, that snow will get lighter and lighter, but yet still not titanium white. So those trees back there are going to have just the faintest shade lighter. And the snow that sits on them, we're going to have very thin strokes. This isn't going to be really heavy because it's further in the distance. The trees are smaller. So the snow sitting on them is going to look smaller. Paying close attention as you snow put snow on your branches to what branches are behind other branches because you're going to want to make sure how the snow overlaps them. So the trees that are in the farthest distance, that snow is going to be on there. And then here you see this branch that's in the foreground. It sits in front of all of those because it's on our frontmost tree. So it's going to go in front of all of those. Now we also need to pay attention to what direction our snow is falling. Because if you've ever experienced a snowstorm, the wind blows in from a certain direction, the snow hits the trees from a certain direction, and it can accumulate on the side of the trunk. So here you see I have it on the left, which means every tree that I put it on on the trunk, it will be on that left side. Now the branches, it falls down so it can accumulate on top of all of these branches and all the little crooks of the tree, and that is fine. But when it hits the side of the tree, one side is gonna be covered with snow more so than the other would. So you want to be consistent with that throughout once you make your choice of which way the wind is blowing the storm in, in your painting. So just continuing to put that snow on. And once we're done, we're going to move to our couple. Now we have to decide about where our couple is going to be on the bridge. It's pretty centrally located. And here I am using some very thinned down Mars black and I am just doing very light strokes just to basically sketch in where I want my couple to be. So as you do this, again, if you make a mistake, just take the wet paper towel. You can wash this away 
if you should happen to scrub too hard and remove some of the paint that is in your under layers, you're going to be able to touch that up. And in fact, you'll see that I do that and we will touch that up later. So again, I use very thin lines, very thinned down Mars Black because I'm just sketching this in. Now, another way that you could do this is some tracing and transfer paper. Draw your couple out first, then use transfer paper, put them onto your painting exactly where you want them to be and continue. But I chose to just freehand my couple in on this one. And so you're gonna see me go through the challenges of how to place them and where to place them and how they look best. And you can do this either way, either tracing and transfer paper, draw your couple out first, get them exactly the way you want them to be and then put them on your painting or just go right at it like I did. So here, now that I have my outline set, I'm starting to fill in my couple and I'm having my man here wearing a longer coat because it is winter. And then I'm gonna take that, this is where we're gonna use this crimson and I'm making the dress for my woman being crimson. And you'll see on the left here, we have a little kind of bump out. That would be like her elbow. She's standing sideways. They're walking forward across the bridge. So paying attention to their angle, you would only see maybe her elbow kind of poking out. Now his head looked a little big to me. So I'm gonna make that smaller, but I'm not gonna worry about the line that I left because they're gonna be under an umbrella. So that will cover up that line and we won't need, we won't have to worry about fixing it. We don't need to wash that off or change that in any way. So you'll see, I just kind of leave it until I do my umbrella and cover it up. I have a red scarf for him to bring some of that crimson color in and I'm gonna give her some red boots. And now I'm adding a few highlights just to the scarf into her red dress, just to kind of give it a little texture. And now we'll start with our umbrella. So basically just sketching in the shape of my umbrella. Again, you can do this all with tracing and transfer paper to get it exactly the way you want it before you put it on your painting. I just chose to freehand this one. So painting in that umbrella. And I'm gonna just fill that in. This is just straight Mars black this time. And I'm gonna come back and we'll put some highlights to show more definition to the different segments of the umbrella. And you, you don't have to paint yours black. If you want your umbrella to be red or you want her dress to be blue, this is, this is your painting. Create it the way that it speaks to you. And here we're just adding some highlights on those segments just with some grays that I mixed up. And now we're going to go back and touch up that bridge, like I said. And I'm touching up the snow as well for any areas that may have gotten dirty when I cleaned it with my paper towel. And here, just starting to add some more snow um, to the bridge. And I'm going to give them footsteps. So thinking how we how we walk, this is snowy, right? The snow is going to be falling. They're going to leave footprints in the snow. So I started with the light spots. And then of course, I'm gonna add depth by putting darker centers. And I'm gonna carry this right off the bridge and off near the edge of my painting. So it shows they are walking into my painting. Once I have the dark spots, which would be the impressions and leave that's leaving the shadow in the snow, I'm gonna come back through with some highlights with the lighter colored snow and just kind of go around them to give the impression that they have left impressions in the snow. So going through and then I'm just adding more shadows and highlights to my bridge. I'm getting my footprint set. And now we need to do our front rail. So when we do our front rail, we're again, we're gonna follow that curve around and I can see here this, that curve is, gets too straight. That would not be that straight. The right side needs to come down lower. You're gonna see me fix that because it, it's just not. And, and take a step back and look at yours from a distance. And these things will kind of jump out at you if it's too, the angles aren't correct. So we have to bring that down just slightly, touch up the back where I just washed that off. Now we're gonna put in the same number of posts along our bridge. I want the same number on the front as I had on the back and they will be staggered slightly. And we'll just fill those in and that's a little too tall for that post. So we'll just clean that off. And we continue to fill in these posts and then we'll put in our center rail. 
again, follows the same arc around. And you can see how now that just kind of pushed the couple into that bridge. The footprints are set in. You can see through the rails. We're just continuing to add depth and dimension. And here I'm going to cover that up, dry it off so I can come back through with another layer because I just needed to shrink that post down. It was a little too tall. And now we're going to come through and we're going to add snow because it is snowing. Snow will also be accumulating on our bridge just as it did our trees. So I'm going to add snow to the top of each of these posts and for the lamp post, we'll come back through and get the other posts when we put the lights in. And there's the reason I didn't continue with all the lamp posts is because I want the glow of the lights first. So we're going to work on that and then we'll come back and we'll put the shape of the lamps on afterwards. So we're going to do that here in a minute, but we just continue to come through, put very thin lines. The snow is accumulating on our bridge. Caught my post there, so made it disappear. So adding our snow, snow would also accumulate on some of the lower uh, rails. So we want to put that all in there. Now, once we have that done, we're going to mix up some of our, the glow of our light. So we're going to do a very pale yellow. So we're going to mix our, our yellow and our titanium white. And we want it then like a very pale lemon yellow. And we're going to put that in around. And this is just a glow. So we just want this kind of orb of light. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle. You're just having the light illuminating from these lamps. It's just the glow of the light. It is okay if we see and we do want to see some of the what's underneath coming through because this is just a glow, right? So it's just gonna be on that surface. I'm also hitting the snow with this. I'm gonna hit the ice because that could be a reflection of this light on this post. So anywhere the lights are going to be, I want this glow and I am the snow on the ground around it. I am also going to want that glow. So I add a little bit of that. I glaze that pale yellow into that. So now taking a little bit of titanium white and brightening that color just slightly, I am going to come in a slightly smaller area and put this to make the glow brighter. And then I'm going to do it again and I'm going to make it again slightly brighter, but not yet pure titanium white. And I'm going to go in a smaller area and eat, brighten that up even more. Then once we're done, we come back with a little spot of titanium white. And this is our actual light source. So the very center, we want just that touch of titanium white. So now we're going to dry all of our lantern, or all of our lights up. So we're going to be able to put our lanterns in. So going off the shape of the first lantern, we're just going to draw that over our light sources. And that was a little too tall. That one would be shorter because it's further away. And make sure that this is dried in between. That way there, your black is you have to draw uh, dry that glow so that your black does not get toned down because it is wet. So now here on the bridge, I'm adding a little bit more of that yellowish tone, glazing a little bit more of that on my bridge because it would have been cast by that light in the back and I didn't have that there. So now I'm just putting a little bit of the highlight on the, on the black so that there's the glow of the light is hitting the metal as well. And then I'm going to come through and now we're adding our snow. <clears throat> so our snow capped lanterns, the snow would be on our post. The other thing to remember is the snow that is below the lanterns would also have some of that yellow in there. And so would the edges of the rails, the snow that's on those rails of the first segments. So I've just glazed a little bit of yellow color into those as well adding a few highlights on my post to give them some more dimension and texture. And also we would see that post. If we're seeing the reflection of the light on the ice, we would probably see the reflection of that post too. So I wanted to put some of that in there. Then we're going to move on to the snow. And I thought snow might accumulate on our couple's umbrella. So I decided to add some snow. If you add too much, all you have to do is come back through with your darker color and just take a little bit of it away like you see me do here. Once we have our couple done, everything is gonna be finished in our painting except the snow falling in the sky. 
I have an old stenciling brush that I use, and we're going to look at the colors we used for the snow on the trees. Starting with the color that we used for the furthest back trees, we're going to flick a little bit of that paint. Your paint needs to be thin, and this, by using this color, is going to push those snowflakes further in the distance in your painting. Your paint needs to be thinned down. Always use the first flick onto your palette so that any large globs will come off there and not on your painting. But if you do get some, just dab them off and then keep working in layers. So we're going to do a lighter color and then for the final foreground of our painting, that's when we're gonna want that brightest titanium white. So I use about three different shades of white here and use on my foreground the brightest white. And the other thing is I see my couple here and I don't want that much snow on them. So I'm gonna touch them up so that they're under the umbrella, not as much snow is hitting them. So there you have it, a winter's day in the park. I hope you enjoyed this painting. I will put a link here to part one and two. If you haven't had a chance to watch them, you can find them there. If you enjoyed this three-part series, please hit that thumbs up. If you would like to see more, subscribe to my channel and ring that bell so that you'll be notified when new videos are posted. Once again, thanks for joining me. Stay safe, everyone, and happy painting.